Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Who's ready for the word today? Woo! Thank you. I'm hoping the others will listen too. As I was uh, spending this last week, I just could not get away from the resurrection. I, I could not get away from the resurrection, so I might just stay on the resurrection a week or two. Is that okay with you? Because, yeah. uh, man, it, it really got me going. And, and today I'm going to do a little different. So I need you to have a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, get that app, you know, on your phone. It's really a good thing. And then I want you to follow with me because there's a lot of Bible reading today. I'm going to read so much Bible that you haven't read all month. Um, so we're going we're gonna to start at Luke chapter 24 as we study this beautiful, beautiful passage in the Bible and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the road to Emmaus. Why are the worship team in the back? Okay, there's, there's no space, come on. I told him I need my amen section in the front. Last Sunday, all y'all were way too cute and quiet on me, so I didn't even I didn't even get a think about it from David Johnson last week. So, think about it. I, I I'm, you have no idea how much I depend on that. You guys have no idea. Catherine's busy with twins, so she's at the back. Bless her heart. But Kathy, you can make a joyful noise from back there, but it'll wake up the baby, so don't do that. But um. But uh, I'm, I'm excited today to bring this word. So I want, you to, I want you to follow with me. Luke chapter number 24. Belinda, you with me, dear? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Luke chapter number 24, as we study the resurrection after the resurrection, the day after the resurrection, I want to talk about this famous story called the, the road to Emmaus. You familiar with that one? Yeah. Them two disciples that were going down the street and all that stuff. So we're going to read it all together. A lot of verses together. Is that okay with you? Yes. Let's read a lot of verses together and then I will get to the word. So those of you watching on Facebook Live, thank you so much. Open your Bibles, Luke 24. Let's get going. Read some Bible together. Are you with me? Yes, yeah? You know, I used to do this because my pastor would do this all the time. Let us stand for the reading of God's word. And so I just thought, let's, let's do that for today. How about we stand and read the word today? Yeah? Come on. Luke chapter 24. Everybody say, I love my Bible. My Bible loves me. It reveals what Jesus is like and how much I'm like Jesus. So put your right hand on your head, say, stinking thinking. You've got to go. Today I receive revelation. I'm not just a hearer. I'm a, I'm a doer. In Jesus' name. This word is going to transform my life. I open my heart to receive it right now. In Jesus' name. Verse number 13. Luke chapter 24, verse number 13. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day. Say that same day. That same day. What same day? The day Jesus rose up. This is Easter day. This is not too far away. That same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. Say seven miles. Seven miles. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Bill Johnson is the one who says that of all the names that represent God, the one that was missing in the Bible is Jehovah Sneaky. He just sneaks up on you. But their eyes were restrained, say restrained, so that they did not know him. Y'all are already getting sermons. Don't run ahead. I can feel it. Y'all are getting sermons already. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? You cannot tell me Jesus don't got a sense of humor. Like he didn't know what they were talking about. What you, what you talking about? And then one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? <laughs> Don't you just want to love Jesus more? <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> Say two words you've never said in your life before together. Ready? Say funny Jesus. Funny Jesus. That felt awkward because you've never said it before. 
You know how I know God's got a sense of humor? Every time I look at y'all, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. You still love me? And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word and before all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Say, redeem Israel. Redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they have seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Notice the word vision. Yeah. It wasn't a vision. Yeah. Them angels were there. Yeah. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb. Who can tell me who those two were? Peter and John and Mary Magdalene too. Peter and John. He already spoke about the women. But he's talking about Peter and John. Remember when Peter and John ran to the tomb and Peter was a little heavy so he slowed down and John ran ahead of him. Yeah. This is in the Bible. Yeah. I ain't making this up. But John goes and stands outside. Peter loved Jesus way crazy. He just <laughs> runs into the tomb. What verse am I at? And certain of those who were with us went around to the tomb and, and found it just as the women said. But they did not see. But him they did not see. Verse 25. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe, in all that the prophets have spoken, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? Now that sounds like a rebuke, but he's really being funny. He's speaking of himself in the third person. This is hilarious. I mean, y'all's mind got to work like mine when you read the Bible. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. This is what I call the greatest Bible study ever. The greatest Bible study ever. The Bible study led by Jesus himself. Now when Jesus was on the earth, the, 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 the post-resurrection Jesus was still fulfilling the law. So a lot of things that he spoke of was under the law. This was his first post-resurrection new covenant gospel Bible study. I told you, if your work, mind works like me, you'd be like cracking up every time you read the Bible. It's actually so much fun. Verse 28. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further. It's like, I'm going to walk on, but I kind of want them to call me back. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. Okay. <laughs> All right, since you insist. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them, he took bread, broke and blessed it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him. Say they knew him. Amen. And he vanished from their sight. Say those three words. From their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scripture to us? So they arose that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. Notice, they just walked seven miles this way. Now they get so excited, they run back seven miles the other way. And found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told, and they told about the things that happened on the road and how he was known. The word missing there is made known. How he was known to them in the breaking of bread. And as we say in the churches I came from, may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Here's two disciples after the resurrection. Say after. after. Going from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And I bet you Emmaus is where they belonged. While all the other disciples stayed up in Jerusalem because they remembered instruction that was given to them. These two boys leave Jerusalem to go to Emmaus and it begs the question, why? Didn't you hear Mary when she said, I saw the angels and they told me. Didn't you hear Mary Magdalene when she said, I saw a gardener. When Peter and the disciples said, he's not there, he's risen. 
they still leave Jerusalem to go to Emmaus. And you wonder why. I assume it's because they didn't believe it. Which also explains why Jesus went specifically after them. Even when you are in doubt. Even when you don't believe it all. Even when most of it does not make sense to you. He still comes after you. Go home. Yeah, I got, that's a whole other sermon, but I got to preach. Even when you had questions and you doubted. Is he really risen? Did he really rise up again? Is it real? Could it be true? And they doubt him and walk away the other direction. Which explains why when they were convinced that he was risen, they ran back to Jerusalem where they should have been all along. Wait until the promise Jesus said. Even when you are in doubt, he doesn't turn you away. Even when you are in sin, he doesn't walk away from you. He comes towards you. The biggest sin in the Bible, listen to me carefully. The biggest sin in the Bible is not adultery, and I'm not taking away from how bad these things are. But the biggest sin in the Bible is none of those stealing, robbing, killing, murdering, fornication. Those are bad. But the biggest sin in the Bible is a sin of disbelief or unbelief. And these boys were walking in unbelief. They're like, he's dead. It's over. In fact, notice the words they use when they speak to him. They said, have you not heard of Jesus? He was a prophet. Jesus never introduced himself as a prophet. What do you mean prophet? This is how Peter said of him, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Yeah. He ain't no prophet. Yeah. He was a prophet. Notice these guys followed him. And then he says, for we believe that he would redeem Israel. Their hope was a false one. Their hope was not in that he would save them from their sins, which was what John the Baptist said of him. Their hope was that he would kick out the Roman Empire and give them freedom. And hopefully these 12 and the other disciples would be the top honchos sitting next to Jesus. It was never about the kingdom. It was never about truly what it was. And sometimes in the church world, we can miss the point too. And while I believe in the discipling of nations and while I believe the kingdom of God is here and he wants us to advance, God's first and foremost priority is person. Is you. Hello? The Bible says that if he had not risen, our faith was a waste. So you can understand why these guys walked back home. He didn't get up. It's over. What's the point? Huh? Sometimes you can hear about the fact that he's risen, but it's not real to you. Sometimes you can hear the news that he has risen from the dead, but it doesn't mean anything to you. The truth is he is risen from the dead means everything to us. I want you to come back next week as I talk about justification in the resurrection. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. I already love it. I jumped around the room a few times. It's all about the resurrection. So here comes Jesus and he just kind of sneaks in between them and pretends to not know what's going on. And while they're hopeless and just depressed, Jesus kind of lovingly rebukes them. What's wrong with you boys? Don't you remember what he said? This is exactly what he said would happen. You can be so caught up in your own personal agenda with salvation that you will completely miss out the big picture of what God wants to do through you. So we come to Jesus with the Lord meet this need for this day. Lord, thank you for giving me this day. Thank you for providing the money. Thank you for giving me the job. Thank you for blessing my children. And we miss out the big picture of why you're in the kingdom. Huh? Can I move on from that one? I got to go to a lot more. And Jesus looks at them and he goes, guys, don't you get it? Oh, don't you wish you could be in that Bible study, just be a fly? Here's Jesus expounding the word. And the whole point of what he is doing through the old covenant is for the first time showing Hebrew people what the whole point of the old covenant is. The whole covenant, the old covenant. What it was always all about. The only purpose of the old covenant was one. What was it? To reveal Jesus. They had the book, they knew the book, but they didn't know what the book was about. 
They had the word. They, they studied the word. Some of them memorized the word. I think of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were the biggest haters of Jesus. If anybody knew the word, they should have known the word. And yet they had no idea who he was. Because they were so religious minded, they could not see what God was all about. God was not about religion. God was about relationship. Oh, in John chapter number two, Jesus comes into the temple, gets pretty ticked off with what is going on in the temple. And people go, wow, Jesus, Jesus got a little angry there, eh? I like that part of Jesus. But you go, why did he get a little angry? Notice the words he said, you have turned my father's house, huh? Into a house of trade trade what is trade you give something to get something <laughs> you tell me why Jesus was angry you're like well he don't like you selling stuff in your church it wasn't about that some of y'all been ready to go whip my hub down there because you're something no it wasn't about that. It was about you turned relationship. And my father's house was about intimacy. But you have turned it about trade. You are telling people they can buy stuff to get stuff. May I throw the word indulgences out there? Just, just throw it out there. You're going to have to pay something to get something from God. You can't pay God, man. Dude. Some of us think that giving our lives to God is a payment for what? Your life worth nothing. Love you. <laughs> you ain't got nothing to give God. Even on your best day. You ain't good enough. But what God is looking for that is more precious than your life is your heart. It's your heart. When you give your heart to Jesus, it, God says, man, this is worth all of heaven. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. Y'all are going to make me run after that rabbit. Stop it. <laughs> I got to get back to my message. Woo! Y'all can tell I'm really excited today. And I really feel free because I snuck out without a jacket. I hope my wife didn't yell at me. I feel so much more comfortable preaching like this. I know it doesn't look very churchy. Pastor Jim came to me in the morning and said, you need to wear the white collar. <laughs> I'm going to pull that one of these days. I'm going to come in a whole bishop robe. Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> and Jesus shows them that from Genesis to Malachi, it was always about him. Yeah. Every page in the Bible was about Jesus. Yeah. I can imagine as Jesus opens the word and he begins with the words, the Bible says that he began with Moses and the prophets, which proves to me that Jesus believed Moses wrote the Torah. A lot of people have doubts about that. Jesus said, from Moses and the prophets. So I can imagine as Jesus opens Genesis chapter 3 and he talks about the seed of the woman that will crush the head of the serpent. Can you imagine these boys going, ah? Huh? I, I, I imagine Jesus, Santosh, I imagine Jesus following Abraham as he goes up that mountain. And he offers his son Sac his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the top of the mountain. And the Bible says this of Abraham, and Abraham saw that day. What day did Abraham see? Because Abraham was about to kill his son on the top of the mountain, and God says, Stop it, wrong. <laughs> wrong firstborn. And Abraham saw that day and Jesus says, don't you see? Imagine these two boys and the Bible says in the, in the later, their hearts burned within them. Jesus takes them through Egypt as the redeemer that brings them across the Red Sea. He shows them, remember the lamb, remember that Passover lamb? Remember the Passover lamb in the book of Exodus 19, it says you cannot break his bones. 
you cannot break the, the lamb's bones. When the, Egypt, when, or Egypt, when the Roman soldiers came to break their leg because the next day was the holy day and they didn't want dead bodies lying around so let's break their legs and kill them. But as they came close to Jesus, they realized he's already dead. Why? Because nobody killed Jesus. He says, no one takes my life from me. I lay my life down. It wasn't the Romans. It wasn't the Jews. It wasn't even you. Oh, my Facebook updates. Jesus. He hung up there because he loved you. And as they came to break the legs, you can't break these legs. Why? He's the Lamb of God. The minute Jesus' bones broke, he's disqualified from being the Lamb of God. Jesus spoke of himself even in the temple in that same story of the whipping in the temple. And he, you've turned my father's house. He says, he says, and you will take this temple down and in three days I will raise it up. And they were like, it took us 46, you know, talking about the real temple. It's like, you missed the point. I am the temple. Can I say something to you? He came as an old covenant temple and they destroyed it. But he rose again as a new covenant temple. <laughs> I wish I had time to go in that one. <laughs> John the Baptist looked at him and said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Can I give you another little thing about the temple? Here's the beautiful thing about temple. If Jesus was the temple of God, he was very different from that structure that you had to go to visit. And then you had to get good enough to get inside it. And you have to do all the washing and the cleaning and the holy and the good enough and the priest has to be all this drama see the temple Jesus even in the old covenant was a different kind of temple he did not wait for people to visit him he went to the people so if you are a temple like Jesus is the temple you don't wait for people to come to you you go to people and what kind of people did Jesus go to? The Pharisees and the Sadducees? No. He waited for them to come to him. Why? When your mindset is that I got to earn it, he will wait for you to earn it. But when your mindset is, God, I don't deserve it, he'll come to you. Yeah. All right, help me preach now. The Passover lamb. The blood post. Remember that? When you see the blood, I will pass over. What is the blood? It's salvation. Hey, you have the blood on you. I said, you've got the blood on you. And when the angel of death comes, he's going to have to pass over. You're all like, oh, that's what Passover means. <laughs> that's exactly what Passover means. Jesus shows of himself in the tabernacle. This is so much, so easy to run with this and I'm trying to behave myself. Remember when Jesus hung on that cross? The book of Zechariah says, And they will look unto him whom they pierced. And when they pierced Jesus in the side, what are the two things that flowed out? Blood and water. Remember in the old tabernacle, when you came up, the first thing you come to is the altar where the animal is sacrificed and the blood is spilt. Right after that, you come to the laver table or the brazen altar and, and where there's this, there's this, water where you wash your hands Jesus is saying dude remember the blood that flowed out and the water that flowed out I am the tabernacle I have so much to share on that but I'm gonna let that one go remember the serpent in the wilderness on the cross numbers 21 <laughs> you look to that and you're healed you suffering with sickness today stop trying to get healed look to the cross it's already there he talks about the suffering servant in Isaiah chapter 53. But he was bruised for our transgressions. The chastisement of the punishment of our sin was upon him. And by his stripes, Jesus is having a Bible study. He's like, didn't you see that? That was talking about me, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, amen. Psalms 22, one more. Psalms 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's like, didn't you hear what I said when I was on the cross? It was all about me. Psalm 69. So many things running through my head right now. Everything was always about Jesus. Without Jesus, the old covenant is useless. If you don't see Jesus in the Old Testament, it is a useless book. 
The whole point of the old covenant is to reveal one thing. Every page in the old covenant points to Jesus Christ. Oh, come on. Somebody help me. If you're going to praise him, praise him good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, move on, move on, move on, move on. I got to go, I got to go. Notice something really interesting. When Jesus rose up, nobody recognizes him. How is that possible? Nobody. Here's Mary Magdalene. This dude loved Jesus. This gal just adored him. She would sit at his feet, look into his eyes. She knew Jesus' face. And yet when he appears in the tomb, she thinks he's a gardener. Remember the disciples? When he appeared to them, they had no idea who he was. Here are these two boys walking down the road, disciples of Jesus. They have no idea who Jesus is. How is that possible? Verse number 16. It says, But their eyes were restrained. Notice the word restrained. And the question arises, By who? Yeah. Did Jesus restrain their eyes? Obviously not, because he's going into great pains to reveal to them who he is. So you ask me, what restrained them? Huh? Huh? Brings me to 2 Corinthians 3, doesn't it? Huh? Turn there, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 14. But their minds were blinded for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. You ask me why did they not recognize people come up with practical reasons and I go, no matter how much his beard was pulled out of his face, you're still going to recognize him. Because something shifted after the resurrection. Jesus does not want to be known anymore by sight. He wants you to know him by faith. Notice when Easter morning, Mary runs into the garden and she sees a gardener. A gardener. Why did he look like a gardener? Maybe because he was now the second Adam. Because there was a first Adam who was given a garden to tend. And Jesus came as the second Adam. The first Adam, as my friend Lynn Hals says, takes a garden and turns it into a wilderness. Jesus takes a wilderness and turns it into a garden. And he looked like a gardener. Why? Because he was a gardener. Say this. If he's a gardener, I'm a gardener. Look at your neighbor and say, do you have a green thumb? Jamima just jumped out of her seat there. Okay, can I keep going? She does not recognize Jesus when she sees him until he speaks. And then she goes, Rabboni. She didn't recognize his face, but she heard his voice. How many people, oh Lord, I want to see you. I, want, I don't think he wants you to know him by seeing. I think he wants you to know him by knowing. He wants you to know him. Can I? Okay, I'm going to say this. The greatest revelation of Jesus is not by sight, it's by faith. Y'all missed a good one there. Robbie got it. All y'all missed it. The greatest revelation of Jesus is not by sight. It is by faith. No matter how deep the revelation is. Oh, I sleep in one day and Jesus showed up. I've had that happen to me many times, by the way. I don't talk about it because the greatest revelation of Jesus is not by sight. It is by faith. Jesus talks to Thomas. And it says, you want to you wanna see if it's me? Thomas doesn't believe it's Jesus. We thought it's because it was too crazy to believe. No, the, the guy's standing in front of them. He says, touch my hands. Feel it. 
feel my hands. Put your finger in there, Thomas. And then Jesus says something very profound. You believed because you saw. But blessed are they who believe and yet not see. The blessing is not on the seeing, it's on the faith. Go home. Y'all got to sneak into my study on some Saturdays and Fridays. It's a little boy in his pajamas running around the whole place. <laughs> They were looking for the Jesus that they knew under the law. And they could not recognize him. For there lies a veil. Notice every time Paul talked about Jesus, he said, I know him by revelation. And he looks at the disciples and he says, the fact that you walked with him actually is to your disadvantage. Because you recognize him and know him by the Jesus you saw. And that's why Paul declares, I preach Christ let that sink in it's not the Jesus that walked around no 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 I preach Christ crucified if you don't allow the veil to be lifted he will come and you will not recognize him <laughs> shall I keep going are you learning something today Those who knew him by sight could not recognize him by faith. In fact, in verse number 32, the disciples speaking to each other say these words. Did not our hearts burn within us when he was speaking? Yeah. Notice, their hearts were telling him who it was. Yeah. Yeah. But they were going by their eyes. Yeah. You know in your heart you're already healed from that sickness. But you are going by what the doctor says. Go home. See, you know in your heart you're meant to be blessed and prosperous, but you're going by what your bank account says. I wish I had a few black people in this church. Y'all are just too cute for this preaching. Whew. They recognized in their heart, and yet they kept looking for what they were seeing. Didn't our hearts burn within us? Their hearts were like, dude, look. <laughs> look. And they did not recognize him because they were still going by their sight. <sighs> Beloved, that intimacy you have with God, that you think that the greatest revelation of intimacy with God is someday being with Jesus in heaven physically. Can I show you that the greatest revelation of Jesus is you knowing right now, right where you are, that he is with me. It may feel like all hell's breaking loose against you, but I want you to know that the King of Heaven is with you. You've been going so much by your sight that you look at everything happening around you and all hell breaking loose. That's your senses speaking to you. Listen to your heart that says you are seated in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers. Listen to your heart. I knew I would be back this week. Oh, say thank you for your word, Lord. Let it go, let it go, Zach. Don't go back. So many rabbits to catch. Say the veil is removed. Say the veil is removed. In Christ. Beloved, don't go back to the law. Don't go back to the law. Because the law is what keeps you from seeing Jesus. What is the law? The law by essence is simply, I got to do something to get something from God. So if I, if I fast and pray, then God will answer my prayer. That's a do mentality. That's a law mentality. In the new covenant, God does not wait for you to obey, to bless you. He blesses you and then it causes you to obey. Oh, I, say, I saw something the other day and this is someone that's my hero. A hero of mine. But I, I couldn't disagree more when they would say things like, the law requires, but grace enables. Oh, doesn't that sound? Yes, Lord. Woo! Listen to it carefully. The law requires, grace enables. It was on all my friends' walls. 
The implication there is that grace enables you to keep what the law required of you. But my Bible tells me that the law was brought so that sin may abound. Are you telling me that grace enables you to sin? By that logic. The Bible in 2 Corinthians 3, the one we were just talking about, talks the law. And you're like, oh, that's the ceremonial law. No, it talks about the ministry of death written on stones. It's talking about our beloved Ten Commandments. Oh, it's beloved to us. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the Ten Commandments are awesome. I think they are great for principles and morals for a nation. They're wonderful. But they are not for a new covenant believer to live by. In fact, if a new covenant live, believer lives by it, he's welcoming death into his house. There, I said it. New covenant people with Ten Commandments on their walls. I'm like, what are you doing? Half of y'all just got mad at me. Come back. So... The law required grace enables. So the grace enables you to keep the Ten Commandments. Which means grace enables you to keep the ministry of death. The Bible says that the law was given so that every man would be a sinner. Grace enables every man to remain a sinner. Y'all, this sounds really cute and wonderful, but they are so deceptive and dangerous. And before you know it, you're burnt out trying to keep the law because the law was never meant to be kept. The law was to bring you to the end of yourself where you say, I can't do it. God says, good, I did it for you. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, verse 31. Let me make a few more points and then I'll close for today. Y'all like Bible studies like this? Okay. I was like, are they going to like Bible studying and stuff? Yeah. Verse 31. The Bible says, and he vanished from their sight. You know, everything in the Bible is intentional. He vanished from their presence, from the room. He vanished away. He just went to another place. He vanished from their sight, meaning. I'll prove it to you. Go to verse number 36. So now the boys run and go to the to Jerusalem where the boys are waiting. And he's they're telling him, like, dude, Jesus appeared to us. Can you imagine that? That's awesome. Right? And then verse 36 says, Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself, watch that, stood in the midst of them. Not Jesus showed up in the midst of them. Jesus stood in the midst of them. Which means what? He was there all along. (laughs) He's trying to make a point. He's like, boys, I promise you, lo, I will be with you even till the ends of the age. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. He was just making a point by saying, I've always been here. So when he vanished from their sight, it's not like he went away. He just, I'm still here, but you can't see me. Even at your loneliest point in life, even when you feel the most forsaken, the most depressed, he's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He will never leave you. He never left anywhere. He's right there. Don't you believe him? Don't you believe him? I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. Remember when he was taken up into the sky and they're standing there and the angel shows up and goes, what are y'all doing? He said he'll never leave you. Go do what he told you to do. He's going to be with you. There's something about the resurrected Jesus that is nothing like the Jesus that walked on the earth. And unless you see him by faith, you can't see him. But the truth is when you walk by faith, you know he will never leave me. He'll never forsake me. And sometimes you just got to train yourself to sit in that car when the tears are flowing and all hell's breaking loose and close your eyes and go, ah, there you are. There you are. Do it right now. Close your eyes. Let me teach you how to do that. It's real good. Put your hand on your heart. Take a deep breath. Ah, there you are. Okay, stop it. I got to finish preaching. Get back. Verse 31. 
Can I finish? Okay, I'll finish with this. This one I'll finish with. I got so much to do, but I'm going to finish with this. Verse 31 says, Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him. Next line says, And he vanished from their sight. That might seem like, aw. No, it's not an aw. Now they know him. They don't need sight anymore. When you know him, you don't need sight. Yeah. Oh God, if only you would show me, uh, just prove to me that you're there. Can a camel come and poop in my backyard in the, heart of a sh in the shape of a heart, Lord? And then I'll know you're there with me. <laughs> That's not faith. <laughs> oh Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put three, what are those things called, baby? Fleeces. fleeces. <laughs> I'm going to have three fleeces in the backyard and then if it's God's will, he's the one for me. And if tomorrow when I go out there and my dog has not peed in the shape of yes, then I guess it's not God's will, so I'm going to dump him. No, dude, you know in your heart. That's how you know. Isn't it amazing how church people still walk around waiting for confirmations? Confirmation comes from in the heart from another person, not outside. You want confirmation? Put it before godly people and let them speak life into you. Okay, now watch this. And their eyes were opened. Wait a second. <laughs> and their eyes were opened and they knew him. Say that with me. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. One more time. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. Say that again. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. What does that remind you of? Go to Genesis chapter 3 quick. teaching better than y'all shouting that's right Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 what are y'all doing up here is it time for me to finish okay I'll finish okay they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in verse number 7 they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in verse 7 wait 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 wait, wait. don't run ahead of me they eat the fruit and they got blinded? No, their eyes got opened. But notice what they saw when their eyes were opened when they ate from the wrong tree. Watch that. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew him. They actually knew him before. When they ate from the wrong tree, their eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked. When you eat from the wrong tree, you find out your nakedness. But when you eat from the right tree, you find out His glory. <laughs> Their eyes were opened. Their eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked. See, any message that you listen to that tells you that you're filthy, you're dirty, you're, you're unclean, you're just a dirt bag, you're just a sinner. You're eating from the wrong tree. My God, people are miserable in their own lives. Yeah. Yeah. They already hate their lives and they hate themselves. Why not go to church and hear how much more filthy you really are? <laughs> you dirtbag. God loves dirtbags. Are you listening to this stuff? Church people go week after week to listen to the Ten Commandments and they're like, I don't keep it, I'm a dirtbag. That's why we lift up the gospel of Jesus Christ in this place. Not the Ten Commandments in this house. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed to look at people that are waddling in sin. And says God thinks you're worth it. I'm not ashamed to look at a person. Where everybody else has said they're dying of cancer. And says God says you are healed. Not ashamed looking at someone that's full living in a curse and say, God says you're too blessed to be cursed. Not ashamed of this gospel. For he has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation, not the ministry of condemnation. Yeah. What you wearing? What's your glasses today? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? When they ate from the wrong tree, it showed that they were naked. It showed their condition. When you eat from the right tree, you see his position. 
and they knew him. The word knew is intimate, intimate, intimate. Can I say this and finish today? And I'll, I'll, I'll try to finish this later. What did they eat from that opened their eyes to who he was? Jesus was the tree of life. What tree are you eating from today? The tree of fasting and prayer? Huh? Boy, preacher, you hit on fasting and prayer a lot. I do only for the one reason that most people do it to try to get God to give them something they don't think they have. Most people get their breakthrough in the middle of their 21 days because somewhere along the 25th day, they realize they're already healed. You could realize that on day one and saved yourself all the hunger and the grumpiness that we have to put up with watching you starve. You seen people fasting? My God, they look grumpy. I'd be too if I was starving that much. That's some food. Why don't you starve that Facebook? My God, that's a great place to stay fast. I just went Indian all of that. Fast, fast. Fast. <laughs> Why don't you go on a fast? <laughs> Seriously, fast social media. God will be happy. We will definitely be happy. <laughs> Josh, you got I mean, if you really want to go on a fast, Fast the thing that you're addicted to. Maybe food is not your deal. Back in India, I'm telling you the truth. I ain't bragging, this is the truth. We'd fast 21 days, no food, water only, three times a year. Oh, wow. And we loved it. So really, starving ain't that tough for some people. Just bring a few people along and do it. In fact, I'm all for you. You want to spend some time alone, spending time with God in prayer and fasting? Do it, man. Enjoy God, but do it from the place of enjoying Him, not from the place of depriving down here. He is the tree of life. And every time you take that bread and that juice in your hand, Pastor Jim was supposed to do this and the worship went on today and we couldn't get to it, but every time you hold that bread and that cup in your hand, you are saying, wow, this is your body. Notice this is why I don't say this is kind of your body, type of your body. We don't do that in Brazen Grace. Jesus never said this is a metaphor, it's a type of, he said, this is my body. Yeah. 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 When you hold that in your hand, it is literally a declaration of faith by saying, oh God, this is your body and I eat it. This is why I encourage each of you to have communion at home every day. Yeah. Every day. And their eyes were opened. My time's up. Did you enjoy that today? Yes. If you're here today and you're watching me on Facebook Live on our future telecast and you don't know Jesus, then your eyes are not opened. Why would you wait? What are you waiting for? Hmm? What are you waiting for? No, I'm not talking about being literally blind. Or I'm talking about a veil that blocks you from seeing who God is and in turn seeing who God sees you as. And there are many of you today that still see yourself as what you've done in the past, as what people say you are, what society says you've done. And the truth of the matter is that is not who you are. You're not defined by what you do or what people say. You're defined by what your creator says about you. And your creator thinks you are good and worthy enough to come and die for. Some of y'all don't need a preacher to beat you up because you've been doing a good job of whooping yourself. And every day you kick yourself. How are you going to manifest the glory of God when you're beating yourself up? Hmm? How are you ever going to manifest the healing when you still see yourself as filthy and dirty? The minute your view changes of who you see yourself as and say, wow, God thinks I'm worth it. And that's all that matters. God thinks I'm worth it. God thinks I'm good enough. While we were yet sinners, the literal word is while, I, while we were yet sinning, Christ found us worthy to die for. If he found you worthy, stop beating yourself up. You got to fix some things? Fix it. Because holy people fix things. Righteous people fix things. They fix relationships. 
They don't walk in offense. They ain't got time to be mad at people. There's a destiny to live. There's a church to build. There's a, there's a world to save. You're here not by accident. Take the lens off. Stop walking around offended. I ain't got time for that junk. If you don't know Jesus, would you come to him today? Those are my friends watching online, watching in the future. If you're in this room, maybe you can join the rest of my friends. And just quickly pray this prayer. It's simple. It is really simple. That's why people don't want it because it's too simple. If I told them to do something religious, they would do it. If I told you give a million dollars and you'll be saved, you would work your life off to, sa to save up a million dollars. The truth is you don't need to. It's a free gift. Free gift. Are you walking in religion? Are you walking afraid of God? Well, then you need to come to Jesus again. Because <laughs> he's not trying to be your master. He's trying to be your father. So if you need Jesus, quickly. Everyone in this room, join my friends watching online around the world. Pray this prayer and mean it with all your heart. Just believe it and say, Dear Lord Jesus, come to you just as I am. You know how I feel. But I know what you say about me. Thank you for finding me worthy. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for shedding your blood. I believe that you are my Lord and my Savior. You died for me. You rose again. And now you live in my heart. From this day forward, I am saved. Have your way in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. My friend, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. It's the best prayer you've ever prayed. Let's all stand quickly. Put both your hands over your eyes. This is why when Paul got saved, what's this? Paul was blinded. Saul had to be blinded. Why? So the scales could come out because he was going to see God through a different lens. So my bishop is Paul. <laughs> Put those hands on those eyes. Just do it. It's okay. It's just kind of feels creepy and weird, but don't worry. It's okay. Y'all look like a bunch of Muslims. It's okay. Just put your hand on your eyes. Say this, let the scales fall out. Come on, say, let the scales fall out. I want my eyes opened. So I will never eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. From this day forward, I eat from the tree of life. In Jesus' name. Would you raise your hands for the blessing? Father, I bless your people today. Thank you for the privilege of sharing your word. Thank you that as we speak, eyes are opening. Scales are coming out. Chains are breaking. Freedom is coming. This week, let them experience the closeness of God. Let them experience your presence this week. Let them experience you tangibly. Know without a shadow of a doubt, he is with me. He will never leave me. In every decision you make, I pray that the presence of God be close. In everything you do, let the presence of God be close. And Holy Spirit, would you reveal to my family ways in which they are eating from the wrong tree. That which is blinding them. Mindsets, thought patterns, strongholds that are exalting itself against the knowledge of God. We pull them down today in Jesus' name that they may know who you say they are and that their minds and their hearts be in alignment with God's word. The new covenant gospel, the Christ resurrected. I bless you in your coming and your going. May everything you put your hands to prosper. In the name of Jesus, I release favor upon you this week. May you see surprises you never saw coming. May finances come into your, into your life like you never imagined. 
let doors open let promotions come let blessings come let favor come in Jesus name as you surrender to the voice of God let the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich without painful toil be your portion this week I command doors to open up let things that have been held back in the past be loose right now let prophecies that are still in waiting come to pass in Jesus name I release the quickening acceleration of God upon your life in every area you are the head and not the tail above and not beneath first and not last blessed and highly favored you are loved you are loved you are loved now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the only wise God to him with great joy be blessing glory honor dominion and power forever shout it out with me say it let your let your on earth in Jesus name come on give God praise give God praise give God praise hallelujah prayer leaders would you come take your place please let the prayer leaders come and take their place in the front if you need prayer if you need prayer come 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 if any two or three of you agree on anything it shall be done the Bible says here is your first you be the second let them say amen and watch how God answers your prayer so come quickly whatever you need prayer for come quickly first timers I look forward to meeting you at the table back there intercessory prayer this Friday I love you guys y'all love me love you so much I pray you have a great week can't wait to see you all thank you so much God bless you have a God filled week yeah love you guys come for prayer come for prayer come for prayer bless y'all